Boxes to build, number six, and this one's going to Georgia too. This one should look a little familiar. Let's see what we got. All right, welcome back to the McGough Shop. Welcome back to the McGough Shop. Jimmy Cleary here, and this should be the identical build to the T100 build. I think it'll go up in here. Anyway, uh, that may have been the one that I sent out twice. Again, I got to say sorry for that one, guys. I don't know what happened. Clicked the wrong button. Who knows? But it's out there now. So we're going to open up this one, see what we got, and make sure it is what we think it is, and then let's pick a topic. So let's go over to the bench. So we got the big blue Mizuno box. Be kind of funny if there's nothing but Titleist in here. I don't know if that's Karma or not, but we'll find out. All right, got all the tape off it, I think. Let's see what we got. Ooh, packaged a little differently. All right, standard law fly, not sensitive to logos. Grip wants the logo under. If I need, if needed ferrules, please. Got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, Canton, Georgia. So here we go. Here we go. What do we got? We've got a Vokey with a Z grip that seems to be popular and a 950 GH. That's a different one. And then we've got some Titleist T100s. These things are in great shape. The four iron we're going up to on this one, okay. These are whole clubs, I'm digging this. And eight, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Six, seven, eight, nine. Except for it probably needs to look like six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll talk about that one. And what else do we have? Oh. Z cord grips again, and these are new ones. <laughs> All right. It looks like we got six of those. And then the infamous, the infamous steel fiber 80s. All right, let's talk about it. Let's find a topic. So I took them, so what I did is I started measuring already. I got ahead of the game because we're not gonna do that part. The grips are within, within one gram. That's outstanding. Now, if you looked at the other video, again, this outfit too, matter of fact, we found that we had some used grips that had the uh, tape on the inside. And they did weigh, they do weigh significantly different than these do here. Uh, not a bad setup. I do like these within the one, within the uh, one gram. Measured the, measured the steel fiber, and surprisingly so, that they're within two grams from top to bottom. And matter of fact, it's funny, the, the heaviest one is on the top and the lightest one is on the bottom. You would think it's the other way around. So not bad, not bad at all. So what do we have here? We have TS100s, and here again, I wanted to show you the, the bottoms are very, very consistent, right? Unlike you see some where they get really big at the top and really small at the bottom and vice versa. Tylus has done a good job in keeping this there. Now. What happens is as it gets more loft, they remove more of the back end of it to give it to kind of keep it looking that way. So I'll give you for instance, the six iron's pretty good. We look at the six iron, all right? And then we'll just go right to the nine iron. And if you look, there's a little bit more being removed right here. All right, and it's to keep that, keep the symmetry very good. And I like that, that's a pretty neat little deal. Now we're taking out the Project X 5.5s, and that would mean this is in the, the stiff range, right? Right at the very beginning of the stiff range, what I'd call it. And they have the Tour Velvet 360s on there. Nice grips, they look to be fairly new. There's hardly any scrapes on them. There is quite a bit on the, uh, well, at least on the 9-iron. You can see where it's uh, right, been hit right there. Somebody was fine in the middle of the club face, I'll say that. And then let's take a look at the other ones. 
The other ones are, these are, these might have been demo clubs, you never know. See, just very, very little. And that's what the rest of them look like. So they should be pretty good. We'll go give them a little light, light touch when we're all said and done. All right, so what's the topic? Hmm, that's a good one. What's the topic? We've been concentrating on builds, and the last set that we got was all heads and components. We never had to take one apart just yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about taking the heads off the shafts. All right, we're going to take heads off the shafts, and then uh, maybe we'll talk a little ferrule finishing. One on each side, all right? So, again, before we get all started on this, just to remind you guys, we have a live stream on Mondays, uh, 5.30 p.m., 17.30, all Eastern time. And it's on YouTube right here on the McGolf channel and on Facebook, McGolf Custom Clubs. And it's a really casual hour, hour and some change discussion on golf equipment. You know, golf equipment, golf repairs, golf fittings, and, and opinions. And we just have a good time talking with people all around the world, all different kinds, golfers, club guys. It's just, it's a really neat mix. Very laid back. So come and join us if you want and uh, have a little fun. And always, if you would, like and subscribe. Hit that bell on the bottom right down in here, and that way you get more of these videos when they drop. Okay. <sighs> so some things to consider when we're taking apart club heads. Now, this is a steel club. And it has a uh, you know chrome finish on it. Seems kind of um I don't know how to describe it. it. It's got a different feel than most chrome. Anyway, so what do we have to do when we when we want to take these apart? A couple of things can happen. Number one, you typically want to remove the ferrule. Now there's some guys out there. Oh, you want to save the ferrule? No, right? Unless it's some sort of specialty ferrule, or you just don't have time to get another one. These things are these things are a buck, right? Or in the in the less than a buck range, to um, maybe a buck or two. No, it's not. It's not worth your time. It's not worth my time. It's not worth your time. Now, how? But you can do it, right? You can do it. They have some stuff you can spray on. It's a ferrule saver. That's a lot. That's a little bit of work. And then there's. Uh, the best way I've ever seen it done is you get a little leather strap enough and you get it really wet and you bring it around there and you just lay it on there and then you heat up the rest of the club and that leather takes the abuse. Now, it can be done with a paper towel, but you have to fold it over multiple times and get it really wet and put it on there. Now, this thing's going to act like a heat sink and all that heat's going to want to go there. So you're going to have to pay particular, particular attention to doing that. I'm not a fan of doing that. I just like removing them. Now in some of these cases, and we're going to find out, I'm going to show you both ways, is that I'm just going to heat this thing up and I'm going to just try and, and twist it off. Now with steel, you should be able to do that. You should be able to just grab it and go. Boom. Now, sometimes they get stuck. These might be pressed in a little bit more than the next set. You just never know. And we'll go over and we'll pull one on the machine and we'll talk about pulling on the machine. So this is going to be a little more in-depth than, oh, hey, Jim's just pulling some heads off shafts. There are different techniques and methods in order to pull heads. So let's go do that. Okay, so here we go. In order to do this properly, you want to do it safely. We're going to start with the wedge, see how that one works. And we want to use butane torch. Uh, this is the burns o -matic. There's plenty of other models out there. It's a cooler heat. It's a more direct heat, more precise application of the heat. So we're gonna go about a minute. Test. Okay, so we got to that. I, I hope this is gonna work because this I know this one's got a ferrule, and it did. Alrighty. So you, not a whole lot of damage to the shaft, and actually to the ferrule. You could probably get away with a little maneuvering. And then uh, what we have is we got a whole bunch of stuff that we've got to 
clean out of that. What should we do with this guy? There we go. So now it looks a little different, All right? Nice and clean on the inside. We'll hit it with the uh, buffing wheel real quick. And uh, this one's actually in really great shape. It looks very, very, it looks brand new, really. So we're gonna take this one and set it off to the side. All right, nine iron. Has a little bit of wear on it. We'll see if we can make that look a little bit better when we're all said and done. Again, we're gonna try the same thing. All right, let's see if we can get a hold of this one. Oh my, look at that, it's gonna be our day. All right, same thing. Still got all the stuff in there we gotta get out. So this time, we're just gonna go straight to the drill. All right, and then to the brush. Oh, look at all that stuff coming out of there. There we go. So what do I look at when I'm looking down here? I'm looking to make sure the shoulder's all cleaned out and I don't see any leftover glue going down into the hosel. Good stuff. And with a little running down on the glands wedge wheel, we got this. Doesn't look too bad. A little cleanup and we're ready to go. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now I will say before we go and do the next one is that when I do all this heating out here, how the, all this heating here, the reason why it works is because I've got this here. It allows me to get this grab handhold on it and allows me to deliver a lot of torque. If I don't have this on here, then I'm not gonna be able to get the torque I need and most likely this is not going to work, which takes us to our next step which is using the machine. So in order to use the machine, what it really relies on is some, and everyone does it. There is some sort of stop of which it has to hit the hosel or the top of the hosel. So this has got to go. So now we need a knife. I got me a new one, it's a hide box knife. These things are indispensable. When it, These are indispensable when they come to doing this kind of stuff. So now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna heat this up for about 10 seconds, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but not too much more. There we go. All right, and then we grab on it and just pull it down. Grab and pull. There we go. Grab and pull. Grab and pull. And might need a little more heat. Okay. I do it, I do the grab and pull method. I do the grab and pull method so that I don't if I hit it with the sharp edge, I'm laying it this way. Instead of going like this and pulling back, I have a real opportunity of scraping the screw. If I do it like this, I have a real opportunity of scraping the paint, particularly if you're using graphite. And this, even on chrome, I can do it. So I like laying the edge down and pulling it back. And that gets it out of there. Now, we're gonna heat this up and then I'm gonna go put it in the, in the shaft puller. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do the heating off camera and then we're gonna go straight to the shaft puller. Okay, let's see if we can just do the heat. All 
and just a little bit less heat, and I think that's the advantage of having a shaft puller, to be honest. And out it comes. And there you go, we got the same, same stuff we gotta go clean out, so let's get that. Okay, so the, the difference between just pulling it apart and using the shaft puller is that you have to apply a little more, you have to apply heat on the hosel and, and, and over here on the ferrule, and that heat rises up and can discolor this portion of it. So once you get it all cleaned out like we did here, then you just run it over top with the, uh, the wheel. In a lot of cases, you can just wipe it off, but I like using the wheel to keep the polish the same, and it looks good. So let's do another one. All right, let's put this in there. <laughs> well, that's came out. <laughs> Okay, after that trip it took to the floor, although I have padding, so it didn't really do any damage or any, to either the floor or the head. We did the polishing right here. We've got the inside all nice and cleaned out. Nice look to it. Now we're gonna do the rest. However, let's talk pullers. All right, so what we just covered were a couple of ways of just pulling heads, right? Uh, manual, mechanical, whatever. Now there are all kinds of other pullers out there to fit all kinds of budgets. There's a couple that's just a, a couple of springs on a couple of uh, pieces of steel that are just made to push apart. Very inexpensive, very slow, but it pushes a, it puts a pressure on it. Now, <laughs> we used to, we had a walk and we filled it full of playground sand because there were certain paints that were just so soft that if you went to heat them up, it would automatically, the paint would eat itself almost immediately. So we used to heat things in walks. I mean, I mean, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, right? And, and that's what we did. Then the paint got better, so the walk disappeared. Now, as far as the spring-loaded puller, what I have here is a spring-loaded hydraulic puller, right? And it's I won't say it's one of a kind, but uh, mine is number two in the in the in the model serial numbers <laughs> of the of that thing. They are no longer in production, so I can't I can't tell you where to go to get it. However, there are other very very nice ones out there. Golf Mechanics, Golf Works, both have them. They're called reverse thrust pullers, and basically it's got a nice little clamp that comes down, and then a and it's a a screw type that pulls them out. I like those, right? I really, really like those. It's got a large clamping area, so to hold on to the clamp, you can adjust the tension that you put on it, or I can't with this one, and you can put it in a vise or permanently mount it, so you can go either way with that one. Now, there are other ones out there. Mitchell makes one. I've had both of the screw-type Mitchells. Uh, I use them both to take off all kinds of clubs, Is but it was a little smaller and it took a little bit more time. High quality product, it just takes a little more time. Uh, there are other stuff that's in between, okay? There's stuff that is in between. And the, and the stuff that's in between are other, are other screw types. Now there is one out there that works on leverage. Uh, Golfworks has, it works on leverage and it's this long and it, it pull on this rod and a lot of people like it, right? It really works well for them. Has to be securely fastened to something that doesn't move. Outside of that, you'd be in good shape. All kinds of ones out there. There is a hydraulic one that you can get that's out there that you would clamp to the edge of a bench and it's hydraulic and it pushes up like that. It's also a very nice one. I believe Billy Bob's has one or had one, but that's where it's at. You would go out to eBay. eBay's got one out there that will give you plans on how to make one if you're a handsy, if you're, you know, handsy kind of guy. So there's all kinds out there to use. It's all what fits your budget, what all fits your concept, or what you think works the best, whatever fits your speed, okay? Personally, in this area, I don't like messing around, so I go and I go with, the, with who knows. 
The fellow that did this was an, made this was an excellent club maker, knew exactly what he was doing. Now, my second pick after this would be the reverse thrust. And then any type like that going, going down that line. So that's it. All right, so I got to pull apart mm, three more. Or I got to put apart three more, and then we're going to put them back together. And then we'll go over what, you know, some more steel fiber, some more Titleist 100, and, and show you what they look like when they're all done. into day two of this now we really want to talk about just the disassembly of the stuff but i will go over some oh what we did right so feral prep for me is just a big thing you guys know that and just as a thing and we talked about it in videos before when you're finishing ferals whether it be with a belt or by hand or, or when you're you know polishing them that's the inspection time right that's inspection time for making sure that it's a smooth all the way around, looks like a line, that kind of thing. No gaps, just all, you know, the things that you want it to look like, i.e. good. And a few of these, what will happen is inevitably, you're gonna get some glue and it's gonna ooze out and you're just gonna have to flick it with a knife and then refinish it. And that happens, that happens in almost every one of the builds I have. And it's just this minuscule piece that you see when you're rotating around. It's like a tire being out of balance. It'll go around, 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 and it just drives me insane. So I flick it off, refinish it, and voila, it's good. Just saying, all right? So what you're seeing, so what we did after that is we had to cut and we had to grip. Now I wanted to show a little bit more about gripping since these are very cool and right now very uh, hard to get grips, right? We checked. It's going to be about a month before the Z cords are back in stock. So if you've got them, either use them or hold on to them one way or another. But we, uh, he, he sent enough over. We have one left in stock. So <laughs> that tells you something right there. Anyway, the idea there of putting on the grip is to make sure that the tape is nice and smooth and that you push it on and then it's, you know, one motion and another motion or one full motion, however you want to get it on there. But you don't, you, the idea is not to stop, take a look, and oh my God, am I done? No, boom, boom, and get in there because you have to seat it. You don't. Nobody likes that the, the butt section where it moves back and forth. That's no good because it adds length to the club, and that's something else. So what we did, we added to the T100s, player's cavity, very nice set. Um, put the steel fiber 80s in it with the cords, half inch long, standard everything else. So when we get done with this, we'll be bending them and everything. So right now you should be seeing what they look like at the finish. 
you know, all cleaned up, ready to go. And they're going back down to Georgia. And it just so happens I talked to the guy, the golfer that this set belongs to, wondering about the set. And he, I was actually gluing him as we were talking. So it was kind of fun to talk to him. Good guy. Uh, I think he'll enjoy these things quite a bit. Now, again, what you're going to see over here is a, right there, is a big circle that says McGolf on it. Please, if you would, hit, uh, hit that button so you subscribe. Hit that bell down at the bottom. You get more of the videos when they come along. You're going to see another video right here that talks about what we have in the library that you may like. Please watch that. Now, coming up, what we have is uh, build number seven, and that one's going to Quebec, Canada. Uh, it looks to be very interesting. It's going to be a mix between pings and titles and all different kinds of shafts. So this one's going to be an interesting build. Also, we're going to have some reviews coming for uh, some drivers and the finish up, not finishing, but an update on the winter workouts. So there's a lot to be going on around here and sticking around with the channel. Tell your friends we really want to get up there in the channel in the subscriber count. And as always, guys, let's see your scores go low.